Hi, everybody. We are so excited to be here to do an overview of the MSW curriculum for Admitted Students Week. My name is Lorian Carter. I'm an associate professor of practice here at the Brown School. I teach in the social work program. I also oversee the entire MSW Foundation Year curriculum. So I support all of the lead instructors for all of the courses in your first year. So I'll be back in a few minutes to share a little bit more about our curriculum. I'm going to turn it over to Chloe Risto. Hey there, everybody. Chloe Risto. Uh, I am the MSW program manager, so helping uh, faculty in the program and doing a lot of academic advising. Thanks for joining us today. I will also pop in a little bit later, but for now, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Jewel. Thank you, Chloe. My name is Jewel Stafford. I am a faculty member in the Brown School. I teach social work classes. I'm also in the Office of Field Education and I am the director of the Racial Equity Fellowship Program. Super excited to meet all of you all and talk to you all about field education. And I'm gonna turn it over to my colleague, Erica Gonzalez. Hello everybody, I'm also a member of the field education team at the Brown School and a faculty member and I teach within the Children, Youth and Families curriculum and I'm excited to speak with you today about field ed. So Jewel, can you get us started with our mission overview today? I would love to. So here at the Brown School, we have a great mission to educate and prepare our future social work and public health leaders in the areas of policy, practice, and research. To do that, we really believe it's important to pioneer research and apply results to impact policy and practice locally, nationally, and internationally. Finally, we also wanna collaborate with organizations to improve access to and quality of social services to address social and economic justice. All right, so how we kind of embody the mission is through our curriculum. And our curriculum was designed and is designed to be different. One of the elements that makes it a little different than other MSW programs is our focus on evidence-based practice. And in particular, we have a Brown School model of evidence-based practice that we think is um, holistic in it, that it addresses not just what are the best clinical treatments, but how to think about using the evidence-based practice process to learn about policy and to find out what are effective policies, what are effective community interventions as well. Um, as part of our curriculum, we really um, talk about not just micro practice, so not just those clinical social work skills and not just macro practice about how to be a legislator or a lobbyist, um, but really understanding that our discipline spans from micro and meso community level practice all the way into macro practice. And so students in our program Program, we'll get a really deep and wide understanding of the continuum of social work services that they could be involved in across their career. We also have an anti-oppression framework. Um, and as Jewel mentioned, she's uh, the director for the, the Racial Equity Fellows. Um, that is just one of the ways that we think about building our curriculum and our field experiences around really understanding what oppression is, um, what bias looks like at an individual level, at a meso level, and at a macro level. And then again, kind of using the interventions that we learn across all of those, uh, that continuum of, of service delivery um, to make sure that we are good allies, um, as well as uh, advocating for policies that are just, as well as for programs um, and services that are, are responsive to the needs of a wide variety of, of populations. And finally, um, you will notice that um, if you haven't spent much time with our course curriculum yet, you will find that we have a lot of courses that are available to you. So really extensive offerings, both across a number of different concentrations, as well as within each concentration. And we do that on purpose because uh, we want to make sure that you have access to uh, the things that we know a whole lot about, a kind of what we call the traditional social work careers. So if you are really interested in being a, a licensed clinical social worker, if you're really 
really interested in doing direct level work. Um, but we also know that social workers are finding themselves in all kinds of places. Um, so we think about those as emerging careers. We know that social workers um, are working in municipalities. They're working in local government. Um, they're, you know, they're being a, a stronger voice of, of advocates. And so our curriculum is designed to, to think about the traditional social work as well as thinking about what you might be able to do. It makes me so excited to think about these emerging careers. Um, I see each of you as having a role to play. When people say things like defund the police, um, then we've got to have those, those public dollars going into mental health crisis intervention teams. And you'll get to be part of those in a way that um, I am not able to because now I'm working um, behind the scenes and educating the next generation of social workers instead of being out there and doing it myself. So I really look forward to seeing you in those emerging careers. So as Lorian talked about, we do have extensive offerings here at the Brown School. Uh, so depending on what your interest is, a concentration is ready for you. Whether it is ranging from more direct practice to that, that meso macro level as Lorian had um, talked about earlier. So you see here the list of our 10 different concentrations, American Indian Alaska Native, Children, Youth and Family, perhaps you're interested in health or mental health. We also have older adults and aging societies, two different opportunities in the area of social and economic development, whether you might be interested in the domestic lens or the international lens. We have a fairly new concentration that has been added, social impact leadership, as well as violence and injury prevention. And if none of those are quite yet aligned with where you are hoping to go post masters, we also have an option to individualize your concentration based on your interests and your career goals. And if that is not quite yet what you need and you want a little bit more than just the concentration, we also have six optional specializations. So you can think about this. Um, if you think about it like your undergrad where there is a major and a minor, you had to have a major, but you didn't have to have a minor. You can think about that in our language of concentration and specialization. So you will have to declare a concentration, but these specializations, while they are not uh, required, could be a really great option to help bolster your experience at the Brown School from management, policy, research, sexual health and education, social entrepreneurship and system dynamics. Many of our students elect to specialize as well so that they can further get some depth in the in their area of, of interest and expertise. So that's a little bit about what we have um, in house with our social work program. We also have the option for dual degree programs here at the Brown School, whether that be in our public health uh, degree or our social policy degree, two different options housed within the Brown School that might be of interest to you should you want to uh, have a dual degree. But not only in the Brown School do we have these options, we have what we call joint degree options. And that's when you do the MSW with us and you are partnered with another um, department or college to have a secondary degree. As the list here shows you, we have social work and business, education, law, architecture, urban design. And we also have a partnership with Eden Theological Seminary here in St. Louis where folks can get a joint degree in pastoral studies or divinity. Suffice it to say that the Brown School does have an avenue for probably every single one of you on the call with us today. And let's get a little bit deeper into what actually will happen, what classes might look like. And I'm gonna flip it back over to Lorian to talk about the foundation level coursework. Great, thanks Chloe. So in your first, um, what we call foundation level coursework that is usually completed over the course of your first year, um, we have 25 credit hours across seven different courses and then field, um, your foundation practicum, and a seminar that's tied to that. Um, we have proficiency exams for research methods and for human behavior. And proficiency exams are useful for those of you who have a strong background in research, or if you have a de an undergraduate degree in any of the other helping professions, so human development, psychology, sociology, anthropology, um, you may have already gotten a lot of the, the course content that's covered in human behavior. And so the way that proficiency 
exams work is you would take those proficiency exams before you start your classes in the fall. If you pass those, um, then you don't have to take research methods or human behavior at our at this Brown School. It opens up two additional electives for you. So you still need 25 total credit hours that would be kind of assigned to that foundation level coursework. Um, but two of those those uh, of those courses would be electives that you could choose to use however you want. So if there were specializations that were interesting to you as you were listening to Chloe talk, um, you could pick up additional coursework across um, across your electives if you test it out of research methods or human behavior. Those are the only two courses that have test out options. Um, all of the rest of the courses are required in your first year at the Brown School. So we think of this as really kind of setting the stage. Um, and part of the reason this is important, many of you who are on this call probably don't have a background in uh, psychology or one of the helping professions, and you definitely don't already have a bachelor's in social work. Some of you may be joining us with a degree in English or journalism. Um, a wide variety of, of folks find their way to social work, and we want to make sure that in our first year, we are really building your foundation so you understand the discipline of social work. So uh, thinking about uh, practice one, which is social work practice with individuals and families and groups, helps really orient you to that more clinical direct practice work with clients. Social work practice two, which is social work practice with organizations and communities, gives you that kind of meso level understanding how uh, nonprofit organizations are designed to have an impact and uh, meet their own mission. And then um, the social welfare policies and services class gives you an overview not only of the history of our profession and how it was really built, but also understanding how social welfare policies continue to uh, be enacted that are either um, going to positively or negatively impact some of our client, uh, client populations. So that's where you're going to get that kind of macro level. So you remember at the beginning of this call, I said you will get a lot of exposure um, to the, the wide variety from micro to meso to macro. And we really begin that at that foundation level. We know that uh, many of you may have backgrounds around social justice and diversity. You may have done some training. You may be uh, you know, even facilitating some, uh, some kind of intergroup dialogues. We appreciate when you can bring that skill set to the Brown School. We do still require that you take our social justice and human diversity course. What we found over the years is even if you have a strong background in this, there's so much happening in our world on a daily basis um, that really is around um, bias and oppression that having a course to kind of ground yourself in is really helpful at the Brown School. And it just gives you, again, a set of common language to, to share concerns and to learn about effective ways to be an ally, um, as well as just being a place that when those things happen in our world, um, there's a, there's a place to do some reflection and to um, and to kind of collectively uh, grieve and then collectively get energized again. Um, and then we have social, economic, and political environment, which again, we understand that there are so many things around our clients that impact whether or not they get access to services. So we have an entire course that kind of helps you understand um, the social, economic, and political environment. And then finally, um, at the usually starting in the spring of your first year, you will begin your foundation practicum. You'll hear a few more details about that in, in just a bit. And in the first semester of your first practicum, you would take an integrative seminar course. And we think of that course as the place where you're really kind of bridging the classwork in our curriculum to what's happening in field um, and making sure that there's kind of good alignment between what we're teaching you and what you're actually getting to experience. And it's a great opportunity, again, to um, share collectively with, with other students who are kind of in similar spaces to you um, as you're kind of getting your feet wet in the, in the profession of social work. Great. Thanks, Lorian. So building upon this year one, this foundation coursework takes you into year two at the concentration level. So regardless of which one of those 10 concentrations you end up declaring, you will all have the opportunity to follow uh, this bit of an outline here where every single uh, student has the opportunity to take a policy course within their concentration, building upon social welfare policies and services. Every single concentration has a theory course that helps embed and, and um, frame out the coursework that you will take in that concentration. Every single concentration gets nine credits, so three different courses and what we call practice methods. That's really where you get, to, you know, get those proverbial hands dirty in the work as it builds upon the theory and the policy course. 
every single Brown School student will also take three credits of evaluation. You have a couple different options uh, that you'll get to pick from, whether it's more around program evaluation or perhaps more around policy analysis, depending on what your interests and career goals are. Additionally, the Brown School um, realized uh, a few years back that many of our social work students within about three to five years of graduating are being asked and tasked with leadership and management positions uh, wherever they end up going post the Brown School. From those anecdotes of our alumni, it was deemed uh, important and necessary that our students have exposure to this area of leadership and management. So every single Brown School student will have the opportunity to graduate with at least these three credits of leadership and management to help round out your coursework experience. And then just like in the foundation year, when you had a practicum experience in foundation, so will you have a concentration practicum, which will total five credits and it will be aligned with whichever concentration you have declared. So Chloe, can I jump in here with a couple frequently asked questions that we hear from students about the concentration? Yeah, please do. All right, so um, typically students wanna know when they have to declare concentration. As Chloe said, you will declare concentration. Um, we expect that you will do that before the end of 30 hours of the program or before the end of your first year. Um, and if you are choosing one of the nine um, uh, concentrations that are already formed for you. It's a very easy process. If you want to individualize, um, it's a little bit more work. And so um, it, it, when you're thinking about whether or not it, you're a good fit for an individualized concentration, when you it would be spending some time looking at the courses that are offered in each of the concentrations, because as I'm glad we're stopping on this slide, because if you create an individualized concentration, it still has to have this formula, it has to have a policy, has to have a theory, has to have three practice methods. And you would select those courses from the uh, from the other nine concentrations and you would then put together your own individualized concentration coursework um, and you know many students don't need to do this um, we're making it easier and easier for students to not do this as we learn from the individualized concentrations that uh, that students propose each year so as an example of that we used to have a lot of students who were individualizing around children youth and family and mental health they knew that they wanted to be a licensed clinical social worker. They wanted to be in you know, either community mental health agency or in private practice working with children and adolescents. And so they were, they were putting courses together from our children, youth and family concentration and from our, our mental health concentration. And it happened so often that what we realized is we could create a track for that in the mental health concentration. So now there is a child and youth behavioral track in the mental health concentration. So those students who previously would individualize don't need to individualize now. Um, so it doesn't mean that there isn't a place for some students to individualize, but just to say that if what you're trying to do is just take one more class or you're trying to individualize to avoid taking one class, that's probably not gonna work. Um, we, you do have to submit your individualized proposal and it has to be approved by our assistant dean in the MSW program and what they're looking for there is that you will get sufficient um, depth in something that we know that you get sufficient depth in if you pick one of our nine concentrations so this isn't a place to pick one course from every single one of the nine concentrations and call that an individualized concentration that would be a lot of breadth a lot you would learn a little bit about a lot but not a lot about anything and so we're really particular about making sure that when you have an individualized concentration concentration that you've thought through your rationale. You have to share that rationale with us. You have to share the, the courses that you would put together as part of your curriculum plan. You don't have to do all of that on your own. You're welcome to ask your academic advisor, your faculty advisor um, for some support as you're putting together an individualized concentration. The, in, the concentration chairs are really useful people for that because they know their concentration inside out in, and up and down. And so working with them to figure out what are the right courses from the children, youth, and family concentration or from the, the SED domestic concentration that they would recommend as part of your individualized plan is a really great way to go. Awesome. Thanks, Lorian. That was really helpful information, especially for folks that might be considering individualizing. So let's go ahead and turn towards field education. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Jewel and Erica to take it away. 
Thank you so much, Chloe. Thank you so much, Lorian. Um, this is really useful information because people constantly are asking, why is field education an essential piece of preparation for your social work practice? So as you're thinking about the courses that you're gonna be taking in your foundation year, even in your concentration year, field education and your practicum experiences help to anchor and integrate those knowledge, skills, and concepts that you're learning in your courses into one of the nonprofit organizations and community-based organizations we have within the St. Louis region or nationally or internationally. And so what it really gives you an opportunity to do is integrate your knowledge and your practice. This also helps to guide and inform what kind of professional you really wanna be, what types of classes you wanna to continue to take, what kind of career you wanna have. So what distinguishes us from all the other schools? Well, we like to say that you can do it and we can help. We are designed for your student's um, agency and autonomy. So we allow you to choose your adventure um, through those nine concentrations. We allow you to think about what type of practicum experience you want, what type of skills you want to have, what type of career that will lead into. Um, and we start thinking about this um, in your first semester here. So we work with the career services, we work with concentration chairs, but more importantly, we work with you. And we provide advisory support and we give you options and we work with a variety of sites. We have over 400 sites. We have an online database. We also have some of our alumni that come back to the school and they sometimes serve as our field instructors. And so we give you a round um, and well comprehensive um, approach to choosing your practicum. We also make sure that it is integrated with the things that you are learning. One of the things that we actually invite you to do when you are doing your practicum is to bring your syllabus to your practicum experience so that you can, again, integrate your knowledge along with your practice. So you take the lead, we provide support through a variety of resources that we have here at the Brown School and we are making sure that they're integrated with what you're learning in your classes. So what will you do during your foundation practicum? So we wanna make sure that you have at least 360 hours of experiential learning. One of the things that we wanna also ensure is that you have at least 50 hours of direct practice with human beings. So whether that is on the phone or doing workshops or engaging or co-facilitating groups, um, we wanna make sure that you are engaging with community members, clients, and practitioners during your foundation program. We also wanna make sure that in your practicum, at least during your foundation practicum, that you're working with a MSW um, level um, professional. And so those are things that are hugely important for our MSW program. And we wanna make sure that through that professional lens, you are integrating, again, the knowledge, the skills of what it means to be a social work professional. Um, public health and social policy have a different timeline, but really all of them want to ensure that you have 360 hours of experiential learning at a um, variety of organizations and agencies in St. Louis. So for your foundation practicum, you will stay local in the St. Louis greater metropolitan area. I can't wait for you all to come here so you can really understand what that means. Um, we have a vast and diverse group of organizations that exist not only here in St. Louis, but within the 50 mile radius that also includes Illinois. And we like to call that the bi-state. And so we have people who are doing practicum in East St. Louis, Illinois. We have people who are doing it in um, downtown St. Louis, all the way to Wentzville. If you have a map, <laughs> you can see that it is a great range for you to understand how to engage with organizations in urban, rural, and suburban um, settings. And that gives you a greater understanding of what types of clients and what types of um, practices you can engage in. 
So when will you complete? We really start with you. Um, we start the search process, the search and selection process in the first month that you arrive. And so we have a course that we call Foundations of Field. We encourage you to join. And then we really start to encourage you to interview with different organizations in the fall semester. And most students start their um, foundation practicum in January, which is considered our spring semester, and some continue into the summer. For those who are in schools, and Erica can talk to you a little bit more about that, sometimes for individuals who are working in schools or in hospitals, they tend to accrue more hours and they're able to complete their first foundation practicum in the spring semester, freeing up their summer semester for concentration or relaxation <laughs> and um, thinking about their concentration year. So Erica, did you wanna talk a little bit about concentration practicum? Sure, thanks, Jewel. So after you finish your foundation um, practicum, uh, your foundation practicum experience, you can immediately begin your concentration practicum. So Jewel uh, mentioned that some students may finish earlier and at the very end of their spring semester in their first year, some students may finish their foundation practicum in the summer. You just have to have entirely completed all requirements for foundation practicum in order to begin concentration, which means if you if you finish right in the spring, you can pick it up right immediately in the summer and take the summer to finish your concentration, or you may choose to move it into that next school year um, and begin it in the fall. So what will you do? So you have 600 hours of your experiential learning. Um, Jewel already mentioned we have a wide variety, a diverse selection of concentration practicum opportunities. Um, unlike foundation for your concentration experience, you do need to align with your concentration for your curriculum work. Um, so if you happen to be a mental health concentrator, you'll be working within mental health organizations. If you're a children, youth and families concentrator, you could be at a school site. Um, you could potentially also be with one of the many youth serving organizations in the city of St. Louis. So you will align with um, the concentration that you've chosen so that you are best prepared to be successful in your career. Um, also, unlike your foundation practicum, for your concentration experience, you do not have to do it within the city of St. Louis. Um, you, are, you are able to go beyond the boundaries of St. Louis City. Um, and potentially, depending on your concentration, you could do a national experience. So um, Tammy Orahood is our contact as an extension of the field education team. If you're interested in an international experience, you would go through Tammy Orahood for the global program opportunities. Um, but you could also potentially do an opportunity that's outside of the state of Missouri for concentration. So that can take some planning ahead of time. Um, in order to prepare appropriately for that, you'll have to think about timing. If you're choosing to leave the state, that could mean that you complete your concentration practicum at the end of your all of your curriculum work. So that could be at the end of the two years. Some students will um, complete that experience in the summer following their degree program. There are a lot of different places that you could potentially complete that. Um, you will begin your search at the end of your first spring semester. I'm going to amend that slightly and say that it's a little sooner, so it, it's going to feel maybe like you just got your foundation practicum and you're off running and then suddenly you're thinking about concentration, but we like you to really be prepared and start thinking ahead of time. So it's, it's closer to the middle of your first spring semester into the end um, that you begin and finalize your search, and then you will be interviewing for that practicum also around the middle-ish to end of your first spring semester. Um, so that you are set up, many of you, to begin that concentration in the summer, as it says here, in the summer or the fall, and then continue through your second year. So I just want to make a note that even if you begin your practicum in the true start of the fall semester, that next school year, um, you still are going to be interviewing and searching at the same time as your peers who are looking in the summer, because all of those, those practicum sites and agencies are super eager to have you on board and are often getting their interview processes started at the same time. Who will offer support? The field education team, of course. So that would be all of your field faculty team, your advisors. Um, for your concentration practicum experience, you will be assigned to the concentration 
faculty member who aligns with your particular concentration. So for children, youth, and families, um, I am the field faculty member and advisor for all students who are within the children, youth, and families curriculum. Um, and depending on who you are with, it could be mental health. Allison Rico is a member of our team who works with mental health. Um, that's available on our website, and you'll get more additional information about who you should be aligned with when you begin the program. Um, but we, the entire team, despite the alignment based on concentration, is always available to you to offer support, to offer guidance. We work collaboratively to support students from beginning to end of your entire program. All right, I guess I'm going to turn it back over to the curriculum team. Maureen and Chloe. Sure. So um, Chloe mentioned earlier that there is this option for specializations. Um, so you have nine elective credits in addition to the um, structured curriculum that you have at the concentration level. Every student has nine elective credits available to them. Um, coincidentally, not at all coincidentally, your specializations are nine elective credits. Um, so the way to get a specialization is to use your elective credits um, to get a specialization in research or policy or sexual health and education. Even if you're choosing not to do a specialization, um, what you can do with those elective credits is take other courses that are interesting to you to give you a little bit more depth in a content area um, or to go outside of the Brown School into another um, graduate degree program um, on our campus. And so you may have, we may have students who are taking a course at the Department of Education. We may have students who are taking a law clinic um, as part of their electives. So um, the, you have options to start those electives even in year one, um, just depending on when courses are offered. We do have a, a wide number of courses available, that extensive offering that I mentioned, but we have some courses that are only offered in the fall, only in the spring. And so um, once you get a look at our curriculum, you will see uh, when you might want to start with those electives. Okay, so we have to talk a little bit about pandemics. Um, we're still talking about pandemic protocols. So this has been a really, really interesting year, um, as you can imagine, at the Brown School. Uh, we have had a lot of public health protocols in place that included physical distancing, universal masking, um, not having students uh, have a gather or um, hang out in, in our, our buildings, which is really sad because we have lovely buildings and lots of really great hang spaces that we've had to close. Uh, closed to our community this year. Um, and we also are having students complete a screening anytime they need to come to campus for any reason. Um, we were really intentional about the, the way we made decisions about whether or not courses would be offered as a hybrid. And hybrid in our, um, in our definition of hybrid is partly in person, partly online, or fully remote is the other option. So a remote course or a hybrid course. Um, we thought about the pedagogy behind those. What were the courses that we had that had the most applied practice opportunities where there would be real value lost in a remote setting. Um, and then with the remote courses, really thinking about, um, you know, how do we keep those engaging, right? I'm, I'm, I am teaching four courses this semester, three are remote, one is a, a hybrid course, and I'm constantly reminding myself and my students in my remote classes that Zoom learning is not passive learning, that it is still active learning and we're still going to engage with each other. We're just doing that in a real Really, really different uh, kind of setup. We spent a lot of time getting ready for this, this academic year. So starting last summer, um, many of all of our faculty went through a self-paced uh, uh, Canvas course to learn how to use the Canvas, which is our learning management system, to really support engaged learning um, in remote and hybrid courses. They also were all required to take a Foundations of Digital Pedagogy course, where they learned about how to apply um, educational technology tools to their to the pedagogy and the, the style of, of activities and learning in their course. And then a vast number of our faculty, it wasn't required, but a number of our faculty chose to do anyway, a course design institute, which was a two work two week intensive institute where they really dug deep into one of their courses and built their syllabus and their course activities with the support of the, of the university's center for teaching and learning so that they not only um, knew how to do it, but they'd actually 
practice doing it. And all of that, all of that work that we did, in addition to a whole lot of other support that um, I provide through our faculty instructional coaching and IT support that uh, we have a really wonderful uh, group of folks who helped us think about microphones in the classroom and uh, cameras that zoom and tilt and pan and how all of that comes together to record a lecture. Um, so, you know, all of that it meant that we were really prepared for the fall semester and we learned a lot in the fall semester. We got really great feedback from our course evaluations that we've taken into this current semester. Um, we anticipate that we will have some of these protocols in place again um, in, in the, this coming fall semester. We think we may have more of our courses will be able to be offered in a hybrid format. We anticipate that depending on vaccine rollout, both where you are as well as where we are, um, that we will be able to have slightly more density on campus, but that we're going to be paying a lot of attention to what's happening in the region um, when we think about what makes the most sense. So just know that um, as these decisions are made, we will communicate. I think if nothing else, the Brown School is well, well known for communication and sometimes over communication um, to make sure that students are really uh, kept, uh, kept aware of what's happening. So we'll be making those decisions and we'll be asking you to make some decisions around um, like what is the best way for this, for your program, for your MSW program. Uh, you know, can you come to the St. Louis region? Will you need to be remote for your entire um, first semester? Those kinds of things will be surveying you about that we want to offer flexibility but we also know that um, it is our goal that we will get back to what um, in-person learning looked like pre-pandemic with some of the we're going to keep some of the best pieces that we've learned and how to use ed tech technology um, but we want to get back to being engaged in our classrooms and we're looking forward to seeing you back in our classrooms as soon as it's safe to do so great thanks Lorian. so Pandemic or no pandemic, we still have our holistic advising approach. Here at the Brown School, we have uh, what we sort of call a three-tiered advising system. So every single one of you that decides to come join us in the fall, you are all gonna get an academic advisor. This advisor is gonna start with you really from jump uh, at June registration for coursework. This person is going to walk you through the process of registering. They are well-versed on all the resources at the Brown School, policies, procedures. Think of this person as helping your journey while in the Brown School. They will help connect you to folks, um, whether that be other staff you might need or faculty or departments. Your academic advisor uh, is, is the one that can help you kind of weed through all the stuff. Along with that academic advisor, every single student will be assigned a faculty advisor. This person is gonna be aligned, usually aligned with your concentration or perhaps your specialization, um, as well as some of your greater interests. The things that you hope to do post Brown School, we will assign a faculty member uh, for you so that they can help connect what you are doing in the classroom with what would come next. You know, I think of this person as um, the, the resource that you can send an email or one day, you know, walk into their office and they say, oh, have you, you know, knowing what you're interested in, there's a great conference that's coming up or have you read this latest article? That faculty member is there to help you bridge your experience into the field. And speaking of field, you also have a field advisor to round out that three-tiered system. So that individual could be Erica, could be Jewel, could be another one of our faculty members in field ed, but they are helping you not only um, in the search for your practicum experiences, but during, uh, they are great sounding boards for, um, you know, if you ever encounter an issue at your site and you need to talk to somebody about it, that's your field advisor. That person has their hands in all of the things here in the St. Louis region and beyond. Um, and they will, along with your faculty advisor, help link your classroom experience to your actual practical application. And they are uh, really, really well uh, resourced in being able to you know, do drop-in 
advising, whether that be virtual drop-in in our current climate or uh, physically dropping by their offices as they are all housed together in, a, in this awesome little spot in uh, what we call Brown Hall. Um, you can find the entire field education faculty team. So field advising, faculty advising, academic advising, you're gonna get all three um, in this holistic advising experience that we, we have here at the Brown School. Okay, and I think when I flip to this next slide, it's gonna be a thank you. How about that? So it is indeed. So we are looking forward to being able to have some live conversations with you um, during Admitted Student Week. Um, we hope that this overview has prompted some questions that you may have about our curriculum, about our field experiences. Please make note of those questions um, and share them with us when we see you during our open live Admitted Student Week um, events coming up soon. Take care, everybody.